Hi, I'm Bill Doherty, and I want to welcome the viewers to another edition of Bill's Bullpen. Bill's Bullpen is a program that's intended to give folks some idea of what's going on locally. And today, we're going to discuss something that's very dear to all of our hearts, and that's energy, and specifically energy cost, energy, and, uh, and some ways, I guess, to talk about how you can reduce your energy costs. And with me today, I have my very dear friend, Bob Schofield, and uh, Margaret Song. Margaret, I understand you've recently uh, changed jobs over Cape Lake Compact. I have, Bill. Um, and it's funny because Bill, for those folks that don't know, was formerly the chair and helped greatly with the formation of the Cape Lake Compact. As of we course know. I did. Of course you did. And so has Bob because he's been there, I think, exactly the same amount of time that I, I have. So, yeah. 20th um, year. Yes. Oh, wow. So <laughs> one of the things um, that has happened over the years is that Cape Light Compact has helped me grow. I formally started as an AmeriCorps Cape Cod member, if mm -hmm. you remember, as an intern, um, took over the residential uh, portfolio. Then I moved to the commercial world. And now I'm in evaluation, strategy, and policy. Policy. <sighs> <laughs> Ooh, that means you're moving up to the bureaucratic scale there. I hope not too much in the in the way of bureaucracy, but mm -hmm. definitely there's a lot going on with the federal and state um, and a lot of the policies that are happening there. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that we really do need to do is think strategically about how to position ourselves so that we can most take advantage of a lot of those grants and funding streams there. Well, uh, you may remember since you uh, are old in the tooth <laughs> with regard to uh, being, part, you know, being part of it, is that in the beginning, uh, one of my personal great concerns was that all of the um, deregulation activity was, uh, re uh, was revolving around generation and transmission, and uh, there wasn't too much that were, you know, that were directed towards what I'd call the residential consumer. And I think that the Cape Light Compact in its in initial mission and its foundation and its justification was to support the residential consumer. Absolutely, and I think, Bob, you've been involved in both the energy efficiency and the power supply, but that has, I think, always been a hallmark, right, of the committee? Exactly. Let's exactly. talk a little bit about energy efficiency because that's one of the things that uh, I think that people need to know more about. Well, I'm very happy to say in born, I would say, we are probably have had enough audits that we could call we've been audited 100%. Uh, right after I joined the Cape Light Compact, I also started the Selectman's Energy Advisory Committee. And in our early years, we did an awful lot to scope the town of Bourne and see where we were as far as green energy is concerned, where we could be in the future, and what we could do to make things work. Talk a little bit about what exactly green energy is. Green energy <coughs> is making energy basically without fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. And the, of course, we, we've always had nuclear, and we had a lot more of that in the earlier years. But one of the things about nuclear, it doesn't last forever without completely redoing it. So we have lost a lot of that. I don't we, think people really understand what life extension is all about. No. <laughs> well, yeah. we do because yeah. look how long we're, we're sitting yeah. here, and uh, which I'm very, very happy of. Uh, but bringing in wind, which was relatively new 25, 30 mm -hmm. years ago, other than a, a spot turbine here or there. And we looked at the town of Bourne to see if we could put some turbines in, and it didn't really look like it was going to work because of the where the land that was available, other than we had some land that bordered the base or mm -hmm. right on the base. But solar, on the long term, made an awful lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, one of the best things that happened to the town of Bourne, and this is on our own power consumption, mm -hmm. we signed up, originally we were looking to go with wind on the man farm. But when a, with an outfit called Blue Wave was formed, to mainly 
putting solar on unused land and a lot of this was quarries mm -hmm. that had been closed and they approached the town of Bourne when they started this they had one up in Plymouth but we took a lot longer time than we really wanted to to get involved in it but once we did we ended up being in a couple of wind or uh, solar farms that they had set up but eventually we ended up being the the major su supplier from one of them mm -hmm. so we ended up in the end with about 85 percent of the load in the town of Bourne on a 20-year contract at nine cents a kilowatt hour which was unheard of it's unheard of today especially. and it's still <coughs> unheard of mm -hmm. And, and that is uh, done very well by the town of Bourne. But one of the things that I tell everybody about energy conservation, one thing that was accomplished on the Cape, we grow probably one and a half or two percent a year on the Cape as far as uh, population is mm -hmm. concerned. But our electrical usage since it started has basically been the same as when we started back in 98 only because of energy conservation and also because a lot of this solar that's been mm -hmm. put on at the same time I think if you look at uh, what was done with the co-op in conjunction with the towns mm -hmm. to allow them to put solar on their buildings uh, we're we're close to 50 megawatts no, I, I don't think that people really understand the uh, the connection and also the difference between the co-op, which you know, which the Cape Light Compact right. was instrumental in starting back in those halcyon days, and uh, and the Cape Light Compact itself. Well, the compact with its charter could not do this type of work, mm -hmm. and so we formed uh, with the municipalities the co-op, mm -hmm. and this enabled them to set up. Uh, jobs and have this done and and they started on a, a very slow rate mm -hmm. it really got accomplished when the when the state went into the green communities in 2008 because mm -hmm. that really did what we were doing on the Cape mm -hmm. for the whole state it, and it uh, I just remember talking to Barry and Larry you know down in Harwich yep. that was the initiation of putting the uh, covering the landfill with, you know, with the you know, with the solar <clears throat> with the solar array, <clears throat> and that and that uh, when you talked about covering unused areas, it was my it was my vision that we could cover all of the cap landfills on the Cape. You know, you know, with the uh, you know uh, with solar arrays because there was always a concern about uh, uh, once they were capped, uh, you really had difficulty in using it for anything. You know, any in any other kind of building project. Of course, one of the most successful uh, solar arrays is at the airport. You know, the town mm -hmm. of Barnstable has is, is done a, a, a marvelous job with solar. Okay. But in it, we did that. We also, uh, we've got well over 500 solar arrays in the town of Bourne. 500? Over 500 homes have, or buildings, have solar in mm -hmm. Bourne. Uh, the Energy Advisory Committee was the first on the Cape Solarize born, and we signed up 38 people, and this was 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the word of mouth, neighbors, and everybody saw what was happening with this, that, that sold them. Every year there was another 50, 60, 70 mm -hmm. people signing up. But the, uh, one of the most remarkable things uh, that we saw overall on the Cape was uh, Habitat for Humanity, which the Cape Light Compact has always been involved with. Indeed and we have, yeah. And, <clears throat> but now we are supplying not only uh, the systems, but also with solar on the roof. So when you get a Habitat house, you basically have free electricity built into the house.
Wow. And that's a big, that's a big well, deal. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. Because energy cost. But perhaps, all of us, and, yeah. and I'll, I'll mention this because with the new uh, federal rules that have gone back in, mm -hmm. and we're going to be in for a good many years, that 30% for solar is back. And this will enable you and I and anybody that wants to put solar on basically paying for their solar system in four to six years after they, they put it in. And of course, I put one at Kingman's 12 years ago, the mm -hmm. first commercial 100 kilowatt system on the Cape. And this past year, we almost had a record year. We're still putting out 20, 20 to 25 yeah. percent over now, capacity. Uh, there was some question about insolarization you know, on the Cape, as far as you know, being able to support, you know, the efficient use of solar. Uh, how, how have we gotten around that? Well, <laughs> it works. Apparently so. It works. It works yeah. very well. Mm -hmm. And if you, you, uh, unfortunately for myself, I have woods in back of me that aren't part of my uh, property, and I'm shadowed on the south side of the mm -hmm. house, but I convinced another uh, resident of the town of Bourne to put solar in and I've been an off taker because it made it worth his while and my while mm -hmm. to have enough solar to supply me and I've been doing that for the last eight years mm -hmm. so I've had had uh, solar also. Now it, it to me it's interesting because when uh, as far as you mentioned the woods because one of the things that uh, I had looked at when you know when I was more involved Directly in energy and energy conservation is that the uh, uh, the appropriate placement of uh, vegetation like trees uh, would uh, let's say uh, diminish the wind loss because as you know you know you get uh, you get lost through building sections you also get lost because of exposure to uh, to air to winds which which drives the heat away from you know from the building itself. So sometimes the, the idea, especially in a, in a highly wind, you know, a windswept spot, that uh, a tree can you know can reduce the impact you know of that. Uh, uh, but of course, you can uh, you can identify and select trees that don't provide the shadow, but pr actually provide the, you know the buffer you know for that piece. So it looks like uh, in order to look at that, uh, you'd have to combine and understand all of those elements holistically, as we used to say in philosophy, to look at, you know, to, you know, to look at the scope of what's going on. And um, by saying all those things, my, my granddaughter that uh, uh, was involved in, uh, in installing the sustainability uh, program at the University of Georgia would be delighted to see that I was paying attention when she told me all of that stuff. So, well, okay, let's talk a little bit about um, what we can do. Uh, let's say, give the bad news first. What does it cost per kilowatt hour for electricity in Bourne these days? It's about 38 cents for the average homeowner. And this is the rates effective uh, with the meter readings in January mm -hmm. for December. Okay, what is the base load for a, particular, for a, for a house that does not have electric heat? Around 550 uh, kilowatts. That's okay, so average. 550 kilowatts, 38 cents an hour. That would be. Uh, uh, I used to use a figure of about. Um, You're talking uh, 220 dollars, right in that category. Per month. Per month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all right. So, so getting to making it real. Um, although we've seen an escalation in uh, in let's say in uh, in e in income from folks. Uh, $220 a month is a big chunk of your income, especially when, uh, let's see, uh, rental properties, if you can find them on the Cape, <coughs> uh, running about, uh, with a between 2,500 and 3,000 or two bedroom or three bedroom apartment. Um, and those, uh, so, so 3,000, which means that um, you'd have to be making, uh, in order to afford that kind of rental and also to buy a house, about, um, uh, let's say a family income of about 150,000 a year, so uh, 220 a month, and you're up to about almost three grand a year for electricity. Now you've got oil, gas, or you know, or whatever your you know whatever your heating bill is. Uh, so, so 
we need to think about how we can reduce the amount of energy that we use. What are some of the things we should do? Well, besides close the windows. The uh, well, the first thing is, of course, energy audits and energy mm -hmm. audits will enable uh, your house to be insulated to meet the requirements of a green community. And, uh, and that's been done. And, and you can get an energy audit, uh, what, every two years? Yep. And... Uh, okay, what, what, let's say that uh, uh, I don't have all the money in the world and I, can on, and, and I can only do one part of the, let's say, one part of the structure. What's the, what's the most important part of the structure that I should look at for insulation? The roof. The roof. Yes. But I do just want to make sure that folks know that we do have robust programs. So if you are moderate income, not low income, there are programs to get you qualified and get additional services to you. Um, we also have something called the heat loan, which is a 0% loan up to seven years uh, and up to $25,000. So that if you are able to take a loan, which not everybody is able to do, then you could finance those pieces and the savings may accrue to you so that in the long run, you know, you're, you're mitigating some of those costs because as you talked about, you know, the insulation and the air sealing, which for everybody to know is 100% covered regardless, that's what's really going to keep all of that wind out of your home, right, all the drafts. And that's really when people feel cold and really want to turn up the heat. And mm -hmm. so we encourage folks to, you know, do this energy audit, it's no cost because you've basically paid for it in your electric bills. And what we're looking to do is really be able to help people take advantage of not only our incentives, but then match them with, you know, the upcoming, you know, federal funds that should be coming down the pike as well. That's very important, Margaret. So how does, mm -hmm. how does somebody find out about that? Sure. So the first <laughs> thing that you really want to do is you can go on our website, capelightcompact.org, to find out more or you can just call us at 1-800-797-6699. Say that again. Sure. 1-800-797-6699. Okay. So, and with that, uh, what will what'll be the next step once you make that phone call? Sure. After the call, what we'll do is we will try to get some income information from you. You are not required to give us that information, but if you do qualify for additional services, then we can get you the paperwork to get you those you know, additional dollars. Regardless of your income, though, you could be the most wealthy person that's out there, we're going to be able to come out to your home, assess some opportunities. Like I said, air sealing is covered 100% regardless. Um, weatherization, so insulation, like your roof is covered 75%. Mm -hmm. um, and what we'll do is we'll make recommendations for you. You're not required to move forward with them. Like you said, if you, you know, want to parse it out or you're not ready to do the whole home, that's perfectly fine. We'll give you those recommendations and you can move forward with what you're most comfortable with. Um, and then you can either choose a vendor on the list if you know someone and really like working with them, or we will assign one for you if you're just not sure exactly what to do. Um, and then we also have quality assurance visits that for some people, um, not everybody, we do it at a random sample, we'll go out and we'll have an inspector look at you know mm -hmm. what's happening, as long as you're comfortable with them uh, there, to inspect the work, make sure it was done up to par, um, and if there's anything that needs to be corrected or if there's things that could be added, that's what the inspector is there to do. Because as we know, Sometimes you go up into an attic, you think that you know exactly what's up there, but you pull up something and all of a sudden there's, you know, not, you know, there's no insulation in that wall or, you know, there's additional air sealing that's needed. So, um, you know, we're human and so sometimes we do have to be able to correct for those things. Well, I know that technology is very helpful in those sorts of things, especially in determining whether or not there's a, a in looking, let's say, looking at a facade and uh, using an infrared gun Okay, you can you you can aim that gun towards there, and, and if there's a, a heat source behind the wall, it will tell you what the density you know you know is there, and uh, that's something, <clears throat> you know, back in the day when I worked in, on, on energy efficiency <laughs> at Boston Edison, and energy conservation, we you know we didn't have, and at that time, as I recall, uh, I was tasked with the job of uh, re, uh, of coming up with an energy conservation plan, and it worked. And then they raise the rates. 
<laughs> because ah. they needed a certain amount of money coming, you know, coming in. And it wasn't until later where we had a more enlightened <clears throat> administration where they recognized that uh, overall we had to <clears throat> invest time and energy into conservation. And <clears throat> they gave a, a, a credit rather than a debit you know, to the utilities for doing that. Now, one of the things I'd like you to tell folks about as well is the difference between what the Cape Light Compact as a retail aggregator does and what a, you know, and what Eversource does. Go ahead, Margaret. Oh, I was going to say, no, you've, been, you've been working on this for a long time. So um, folks will notice that they get a bill from Eversource. Mm -hmm. Eversource owns all of the, um, the cool. infrastructure, the metering, the billing, um, and then Cape Light Compact, if you are with uh, us for <coughs> aggregation, you'll see on the second page of the bill um, something called Next Era, and it will mention Cape Light Compact there as well. Um, so we are um, a municipal aggregator that does that bulk uh, power supply option that's out there. You know, I think um, as we were talking about before, um, residential customers when the Cape Light Compact first started really weren't the target of competitive suppliers. You know, you, you, you saw suppliers coming after very large commercial accounts because it was very lucrative for them. And so one of the things that you alluded to is that, you know, residential customers a lot of times were left without a lot of options. And so the Cape Light Compact, actually under the direction of the two of you, um, really wanted to have a bulk purchase that really um, would provide an option for residential customers and really keep it competitive because without that competition, you know, it was, it was probably going to be a runaway. And so right now the Cape Light Compact is lower than Eversource. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk yep. about. I do. That's <laughs> one of the, one of the points that I want everybody to understand. And mm -hmm. I do this on a regular basis since these rates were published back in December because so many people don't know who their suppliers are, mm -hmm. especially with this very competitive market, mm -hmm. because we have been the, uh, the supply for a new customer automatically. But if you change over to someone else for some reason and then get out without replacing it, it automatically goes back to Eversource, not Cape Light Compact. And I'm very happy to say that with this uh, increase, we are uh, 3.95 cents lower than Eversource. Fortunately, we don't have national grid for service for electricity on the Cape, but they are 12.19 cents higher than what our power supply rate is. And people around Boston at the old Mass Electric, uh, that's what National Grid is today, that's what they're paying. And it's, it puts you close to 50 cents a kilowatt hour. Oh it's, my it's, God. It's awful, yeah. it's awful. But what you as the customer want to do first is take a look at a current electric bill. Mm -hmm. And as Bill said on that second page, you will see uh, who the power supplier is, and mm -hmm. Nextera is the power supplier and has been, I think, the last seven years mm -hmm. here on the Cape. And uh, that's who you want. And if you're not, and you want to switch to Cape Light Compact, what number would they call? It's 1-800-381-9192. Want to say that one more time? Sure, one 800 381 Three eight one nine one nine two. But that's the first first thing to do, mm -hmm. and uh, then you will have the lowest rate. Well, okay. the, the lowest rate is very important, but I think that, that I would want people to understand that one of the values of the Cape Light Compact is that whatever uh, money that the Cape Light Compact collects goes into energy conservation support. And, uh, and I think that's an important distinction to make. Uh, one, of, you know, one of the justifications in the beginning, is, as you remember, Bob, was that um, uh, the, um, uh, the then Boston Edison and Mass Electric you know, got a, a whole bunch of money for energy conservation. But what they did was they looked at the, where the density of their, 
or their customer base was, which was around Boston. So nothing ever came, you know, uh, to, uh, to the lower South Shore or to or, or to the Cape. And that was, you know, how about us? You know, uh, you know, and, you know, that was there. I know that. Uh, uh, let's see, I, I read in the paper this morning that uh, we have 230,000 people. I don't think we, I think it's still around 215,000, but I, so the globe might, have, you know, might not have gotten it right. But nevertheless, we had no leverage in order to access you know, you know, that money. And because we established you know, the Cape Light Compact, we Just were that doing purpose. that yeah. for a purpose and a benefit for, you know, for the folks that live here. And how many, 20 years, 20 years down the road, is it, is it 20 years? Or 25, oh actually. Oh, my God, 25 yeah. years down the Nin road. 1998 is oh, yeah. where, where it started. Back in those halcyon yeah. days, <laughs> when, we, when we first were involved with it. So that time has passed, and it, we're still, the Cape Light Compact is still providing a tangible benefit for the people that live here if they take advantage of it. Yeah. Right. And so one, you know, one of the points you know, of this program is really to let people know we're here, we're still here, we're still available to, you know, let's say to be helpful in, in, let's say in, in, um, and to do what we're supposed to do because as, as I recall, we're supposed to be people for others. You know, you know, we, you know, we get, I know we only get that, hear that on Sunday, but we're supposed to remember it for the rest of the week. Um, okay, now we're actually getting close to the end of this, you know, this program. So uh, what, what, is there any other takeaway that you would want people to have from, you know, from, from your, you know, from your appearance here? Well, one of, one of the other real dramatic things that is, has happened in this last 20 years that we all see every day is when the Cape Light Compact spent about five million dollars and replaced all the tra the street lights on the Cape. Basically. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and a good case in point is the town of Bourne, because this is something that I've been involved with even before mm -hmm. I was on the Cape Light Compact. Is the street lights, and when we did this, the town of Bourne was spending roughly a hundred thousand dollars a year to maintain the street lights and the power. And after the Cape Light Compact did this, it cost the town of Bourne 35,000. They have it folks. $65,000 <laughs> a year. And that's the kind of things that happen when you do energy conservation. And of course, lighting is, is one of the biggest ones. That's Roughly 25, 30 percent of your bill if you've got incandescent light bulbs and you mm. replace them with LEDs. Of course, we could we could uh, thrill the audience with stories about uh, uh, with the uh, uh, demand and, uh, and let's see and uh, what is the what is the period of uh, uh, the end of the day where you have the uh, you have the your peak? system peak? Yes. You know, you know the four you know the four peak. to eight because that's when everybody comes home. And uh, you know, turns and turns on the on stove, the, and turns on the yeah. stove, and stuff. And then in the morning, when they take their showers and things like that, where you know, and they wake up. But nevertheless, all of you out there have an opportunity to take advantage of doing the most important thing with regard to energy conservation: is figure out a way of using less energy, and that's the only way you will permanently reduce your bill. And how do you do that? Well, Cape Light Compact is here and available. To to help you. Uh, Bob, of course, uh, in, as the founder of the uh, advisory committee to the selectmen, I know that Carl Jorgensen is now the, you know, now the chair, and uh, they are available to take suggestions from the community to do that, and they, you can find them by, and, and find everybody else by going on the, um, the Born uh, website and, uh, and interacting with them. So with that, uh, I want to thank both of you for coming. And, um, and of course, it's always delightful to see you, Bob. You know, you're one of my <laughs> oldest friends, and uh, and Margaret, and si to see how you how you've grown in uh, in stature <laughs> and in responsibility and authority. You're doing a great job, and thank you very much thank for you. what you do do. And and I want to thank the viewers for taking taking the time to you know, say to hear what we had to say, and um, and tell folks that this has been a production of Born TV. Mm -hmm.